Today I am going to explain about erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Hi everyone, I am Anuranjan Burman. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate, in short, ESR is a commonly performed hematological test that may indicate or monitor an increased inflammatory activity within the body. That may be because of autoimmune disease, infection or tumor. ESR is not specific for any single disease, but it is used in combination with other tests to determine the presence of inflammatory activity. When we place anticoagulated blood in a vertical tube, the RBCs will start settle down slowly at the bottom. The rate of settle down of RBC after first hour is known as ESR. ESR is measured in millimeter of clear plasma after first hour. Now I'm going to talk about mechanism of ESR. Typically RBC settles very slowly as they have negative charge on their surface which causes them to ripple each other. As a result, the RBC do not form relax. A person with inflammation or infection, his body will produce immunoglobulins and some acute phase proteins like fibrinogen, C-reactive protein, insert CRP, prothrombin, etc. These proteins has positive charge in it and can effectively neutralize the charges of RBC, which then allow for the formation of relax. Therefore, presence of various inflammatory conditions will result in an increased plasma proteins and that will cause an increase in the formation of RULAX. The formation of RULAX allows the RBC to settle at a faster rate, therefore the ESR is increased. Thus, the degree of inflammation is related to the increased ESR value. Next, I am going to talk about the stages of ESR. It takes whole one hour for ESR. First stage of ESR is aggregation, second is sedimentation, third is packing. In aggregation, initial 10 minutes there will be formation of RULAX. When we keep anticoagulated blood in a vertical tube, there will be formation of RULAX, in which RBC stack together like a package of coins because of their biconcave shape. Initial 10 minutes will be required for RULAX formation. In the next 40 minutes, sedimentation occurs at a rapid rate. After the formation of RULAX, the weight of RBC increases and the RBC settles down at a rapid rate. The sedimentation process continues for 40 minutes. Third stage is packaging. This stage can be called as stationary phase. Because of accumulation of RBC at the bottom of the tube, the rate of sedimentation of RBC is low. In this stage, the sedimentation of RBC will be packed at the bottom of the tube and the stage takes around 10 minutes to complete. After these three stages, which will take whole one hour, we can measure the ESR by measuring the clear plasma in millimeter. Next, I am going to talk about different methods for ESR. First one is Wintrop's method and the second one is Westergreen method. If you are going to perform ESR by Wintrop's method, you have to choose EDTA anticoagulated blood. You are going to pick up lavender top tube, which is also called as purple top tube. If you are going to perform ESR by Westergreen method, you have to choose 3.8% trisodium citrate as anticoagulant. For that, you have to pick up black top vacutainer. 3.8% trisodium citrate is a liquid anticoagulant. Black top vacutainer contains 0.4 ml of anticoagulant. We have to mix 1.6 ml of blood with 0.4 ml of 3.8% trisodium citrate in a black top vacutainer, and the total volume will be 2 ml. Now I am going to talk about normal range. If you are going to perform ESR by Wintrop method, then the normal range in case of male is 0 to 9 mm per first hour and in female 0 to 20 mm per first hour. If you are going to perform ESR by Westergreen method, then the normal range for male is 0 to 15 mm per first hour and in female 0 to 20 mm per first hour. Here one important thing you must write the unit in millimeter per first hour, not millimeter per hour. Millimeter per first hour is the correct unit for ESR. Please keep in mind. Next, I'm going to talk about various factors that affect the ESR values. First one is plasma proteins. Plasma proteins has positive charge. If more plasma proteins are present in the blood in case of inflammation infection, it will neutralize the negative charges of the RBC surface and cause relax formation easily and this will lead to increased ESR. 
Number 2. Concentration of RBC. RBC concentration is another important factor. Increased concentration of RBC can cause decreased ESR value and decreased concentration of RBC can cause increased ESR value. If there is increased concentration of RBC, then there will be repulsion of RBC because of their negative charge and this prevents relax formation, hence decreased ESR values. In polycythemia, there is decreased ESR. While in iron deficiency anemia, we can see increased ESR because of lower concentration of RBC. Concentration of RBC is more in male than female. As a result, male has lower ESR than female. Number 3. Shape of RBC RBCs having abnormal shape are unable to form RULAX. For example, sickle cell sparocytes are abnormal shape RBC that cannot form RULAX. As a result, there will be decreased ESR values. Number 4. Temperature ESR has to be performed at room temperature. High temperature decreases the viscosity of the blood, resulting in high ESR values. Number 5. Time Time is also an important factor for ESR. You have to check the reading exactly at the end of first hour. Delay will cause more ESR values. Number 6. Tilting of tube The ESR tube must be placed vertically. If the tube is tilted, it can affect the ESR result. Number 7. Vibration. Vibration on the tube will cause the red cells to settle down too quickly causing an elevated ESR level. Number 8. Pregnancy. ESR increases in case of pregnancy and there will be hemodilution during the pregnancy and elevated plasma protein levels also contribute to high ESR levels during pregnancy. Now I'm going to talk about clinical significance of ESR. The ESR is neither a sensitive or specific as a general screening test because an elevated ESR may occur in various clinical conditions. High ESR values are seen in anemia, arthritis, SLE, systemic lupus erythematous, lymphoma, multiple myeloma, systemic vasculitis, thyroid disease, infections like TB, HIV, bacteria and endocarditis, syphilis, etc. Low values are seen in polycythemia, sickle cell anemia, spherocytosis, dehydration, etc. If you like this topic, please like, share and comment. And those who are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.